It's time to learn how to solve the 4x4 Rubik's Cube, the Rubik's Revenge. But before I show you how, you're going to need to learn how to solve a 3x3 Rubik's Cube. If you do not own one, check out the Gabasoft Cube Simulator. I've put the link in the movie description so that you can download it easily, and then you can check out my video on how to solve a 3x3 Rubik's Cube using that simulated cube program. Now you can learn how to solve a 3x3, on the 4x4, but there's interesting problems that come up called parodies that don't normally happen on the 3x3. So you're going to need to learn how to do that. And actually, one of the steps is solving this like a 3x3. So if you mix it up, just only turning these outer layers, you can just think of the four center pieces as one center on the Rubik's Cube, the two edges as one edge, and the corner as a corner. Now the first step in solving the 4x4 is to solve the center parts. The second step is to solve the edges, and then the third step is to solve it like a 3x3. Three three. So, let's get to it! The first center that we are going to solve is the white one. So just pick a white center piece, like this one, and find another one to pair it with. Just like this. And that will form a 2x1 bar. And what we want to do is form another 2x1 bar, and then fit it in with this one. So find another centerpiece, here we go, and then here's the other one, and then we can just connect them like that to form another 2x1 bar. And then you can just turn it and connect it in place to form a center. After you create your first 2x1 bar, you want to keep track of it. So when you're going to pair your next one, if you pair these two, you can end up breaking the first one that you made. So what you want to make sure is whenever you are going to turn these two layers, that may affect this one, turn it, so that it is parallel with them. So that way when you go to connect the two centers, this one will not be disturbed and you can go ahead and connect it with this one. There, so now we have the white center done. The next one we're gonna do is yellow. Now when solving the centers, we wanna keep in mind the color scheme. So like here on a Rubik's Cube, white is opposite yellow. So then the yellow square will go up here. So what you wanna do on these layers around it is to connect 2x1 bars there. So like with these centers, I can just rotate this up and connect it. And then, to get this up here, without affecting the white square, take a space down from where it's supposed to go, like this, rotate this 2x1 bar into that space, and then pull it back up. And in doing that, you don't affect the white square. And then you can go ahead and connect the other 2x1 bar. Take that up. And connect it. And make sure that the bars are parallel and in the same layer before bringing them together. So you want to bring this layer down here so, so it's on the same layer. And then you can bring down a space, turn the 2 by one bar into it, and then bring it back up. Now if you find a centerpiece already in the place where the yellow is supposed to go, then you can use that. So you want to take like another centerpiece and bring it into here to form a 2 by one bar. So without affecting the white square, you can bring down this empty space, grab the center, and bring it back up to form a 2x1 bar. And then over here, when you find two centers across from each other, you can simply just bring this up, turn it down, and bring it back. And that will form a 2x1 bar, and you can bring that up normally. Just like that. And now the yellow center is done. Okay, now we are going to solve the blue center. Now creating the blue square is, a, is easier than creating the white one, because then you don't have to worry about blue being on this side or this side. It's only on these layers. So you can just simply connect a two by one bar like that, and then just, just do everything like, bef like what you did with the yellow center. Okay, now to know what center to do next, I always like to look at the white side, and with blue on top, red goes on the right side. So then red will need to go here, and this is very similar to just making the yellow square. All the red pieces are up here. Now what I want to do is get one of them and connect it with this red piece. Now we can look at it in two different ways. We can look at it with this a 2x1 bar right here, or this is a 2x1 bar. So I will consider this to be the 2x1 bar, and without affecting the blue square, I can bring this red piece up, just like I did bringing up those empty spaces forming the yellow square. Then I can rotate the newly formed 2x1 bar into the empty space, 
and then bring it back down where it's supposed to go, and that won't mess up the blue square. Okay, like before, if you have two centers across from each other, you can just bring it up, rotate it down, and then pull it back, and that will form a 2 by one bar. And then just like what we did with the yellow center, we can bring up an empty space from where the red is supposed to be, rotate the 2 by one bar into that space, and bring it down. Okay, now that we've got that done, we just need to remember now that orange is opposite red. So orange needs to go over here. Okay, now this is a very easy case in solving the last two centers. We can just rotate them up parallel and then bring up an empty space here, rotate this 2 by one bar into it, and bring it down. And then the centers will be solved. Okay, but in something like this, where the orange center is supposed to be, you can, just like before, rotate this up, rotate it up here, and then bring it back down, and that will form a 2 by one bar. You can just ignore the center that came down with it. And then you can consider this to be a 2 by one bar, and then you can rotate this center up, rotate to make a 2 by one bar, rotate that into the space, and bring it back down. And in this case, you can go up, create a 2 by one bar like that, and rotate it down. And now this may be a tricky step to do. What you need to do is rotate this empty space up, bring one of the centers in, and then down. Then rotate this center into position, go up and grab that other center to form a 2 by one bar, rotate that into position, and pull it down. Now solving the centers is really easy, and if I didn't show anything that you may see on your cube, you should be able to figure it out. It's rather easy. Okay, now you need to make sure that all your centers are correct. Look at the white side, and position it so that blue is on top, and then red should be on the right side. And then, after knowing that, all you have to know is that white is opposite yellow, blue is opposite green, and red is opposite orange. And in this case, it is. Everything is as it should be. Okay, now in this case, when I'm looking at the white face with blue on top, I look to the right, and green is over there. And, as I said before, red needs to be over there. So look, find out where it is. And, and here it is. It is opposite the green. So what we want to do is switch the red with the green. Now to do that, you apply this simple algorithm. And when I use R in the algorithm, that means I want you to grip these two layers instead of just the outer layer. So then to switch two opposite centers with one on top and one on the bottom, you do this algorithm. 2R, 2U, 2D, 2R. It's very simple and easy. And then if you look at it now, red is on the right side. And even if you have all of your edges paired, it will not mess up the paired edges that you've already done. And just by chance, these edges are already paired. So continue on checking. As I said before, orange is supposed to be opposite red, but look, green is now opposite, and green is supposed to be opposite blue. So what we wanna do is switch these two centers. So when we wanna switch two adjacent centers, one with on top and one on the front face, you do this algorithm. R, 2U, 2R, 2F, R. And there we go, it switched those centers. Now onto edge pairing. Now what's really neat about this is you can look at an edge and then you can rotate all of these outer layers and move it all to different places of the cube without affecting the centers. So what you wanna do is pick an edge, and in this case, I'll just do green right. So now you need to find the other green right edge. So just put your thumb on the piece or something so that you can keep track of it, and then just start looking around the cube. And here it is and then just move them so that the edge pieces will be on different sides of a center. So dink, dink. So there, they are on different sides. When the edge pieces are opposite from each other, what you do to pair them up without affecting the centers is you take an edge piece, like you can take the lower one, and then rotate it over to pair it with the other one. Or you can look at it this way, where you can hold on to the bottom layer and then bring the top one over to connect it. It doesn't matter. And then what you do is rotate this up and then look on the top layer for just random edges like this one and rotate it into the same place where the last one was. And then you bring it down and then revert the centers back to normal. 
So now you look on the top and your edges are now paired. Now I will concentrate on the orange white edge here. And so to find the other piece, it's right here. And then when you rotate it up and put it on different sides, the edge pieces are now adjacent from each other. And you can't turn these layers to pair them up. So what you do in this case is take one edge piece and then rotate it over here. So now the edge pieces are opposite from each other. And just a note, you could have always rotated this one to the other side. And then you just pair them up the same way. Like that. Then you rotate them up, bring it random edges, bring it back down, and then bring the centers back to normal. 